The early disaster was an absolute tragedy which changed the island's history forever. It's hard to find words. In fact, my grand's aunt, the one who lost her husband and Boykin, she was so stunned by the event that she lost her words. She, had, she couldn't speak for months and then her words came back, but every new year she would lose her words again. So my name is Margaret Ferguson. I'm a GP here. I started in 1987 and I'm just coming to the end of my medical career. And then next year I'll give up medicine and become a full-time artist. I have a very strong sense of duty and that sort of impacts on the art as well. The Eilir story starts with New Year, everybody preparing for New Year on the islands. The families were obviously desperate after four years of carnage of the First World War, so they wanted their men home. The ship took the wrong course and just within the lights of Stornoway Harbour, so on their doorstep, at 1.55 they struck a very treacherous set of rocks just near to the harbour mouth. The ship ran aground sort of 50 yards I think from shore with the loss of 201 people altogether. One of the most vivid accounts was by Murdo McFarlane, the Melbourne Bard. Um, the men were found lying on the beaches scattered amongst, you know, with toys and things we're bringing home to the family scattered. Um, I know of at least one young man who had an engagement ring in his pocket. So my project is called the Eilea 100. It started in 2014. The Comunachtere Niche commissioned some commemorative paintings you know, for the start of the outbreak of World War One. So I thought, well, the commemoration is coming up in three years. If I do a hundred, that would be appropriate for the centenary. I just started. I'm painting the men that were lost from different photographs. I have an original role of honour, which I'm very lucky to have. And you know, families have been sending photographs in from Malcolm McDonald's book, some original images as well. And Dolphona Grena, the book as well, has got a chapter on the Isle of Ness. I'm very aware of this young boy of his relatively delicate, you know, unformed features. So I'm not going in with very large, big strokes. I think I've become much freer. There's very little planning of what's going to happen. When people look at these paintings, I feel I want them to make a human connection, whatever that is, and to feel moved, of course. That's why I feel this is so important to commemorate them now. I feel I'm honouring them in a way, what they went through. It's hard when you're working on them one by one to realise what the impact of a hundred together is like. Um, we got about 50 of them together the other day in the uh, place that they're going to be exhibited, which is on Lanthar. And just the energy of the 50 together was something different again. It came to me particularly with one of the men from Ness who was lost and they didn't find his body. And his relative came to me and said, I feel that you've brought him home at last. And that's just, it just sort of struck a chord. 